Hi everyone. So what have I got this week from Extol? Well, it's not another laser cutter or an engraver. Nope. It is a heat press machine for t-shirts, HTV sublimation and DTF transfers. Interested? If you are, keep on watching and I'll be showing you full fun creative projects on how this could be the perfect side hassle to earn some extra money. So the main features of this heat press is the uniform heating pad with this handy swing away platform. It's got a pad to regulate the temperature and a timer. It's also detachable if you need to press a larger surface, you can slide it off the base and use it freehand. I also have the Xtool heat press platform and the Xtool mini heat press. If you're into sublimation on wood or slate, etc., this will be useful for you or use it to get into difficult to reach places such as around zippers and buttons, for example. But before I can use the press, I need to cut out the heat transfer vinyl. And for that, I'm going to use my Xtool M1. Simple to use. All I need to do is place the blue mat down on the base of the M1, add my vinyl sheet mat side down, then lock in the cutting blade into the blade slot next to the laser head. And now I can get creative in creative space and come up with some fun projects. So for my first one, I have decided to make a design for a makeup pouch. And for the lips, I am using the tracing feature. And all I need to do for this is find an image online, a free image, copy it, paste it into creative space, and then use the trace tool. Click on the Process tab at the top and select Blade Cut. Then I can define the material and select HTV Vinyl. And I'm going to use the predefined settings in Creative Space. And in the M1, there is an integrated camera, so I can see where I place my vector and then just make sure that the selection is switched to Output and it's ready to cut. And if you want to check if it's cut properly, you can just peel it back lightly to verify. Now on to the next cut. And for this, I'm going to be using this gold glitter vinyl. And I find that this brayer is really handy for ensuring the vinyl is flat and stuck down well onto the mat. Then back in creative space, just refresh the screen, deselect the output for the lips, and then move your next cut into position and turn on the output button and you're ready to go. And for this glitter vinyl, I use the exact same settings as before. And then the most satisfying part of this process, the peeling and weeding out part. To some, not so much fun, but personally, I don't mind it at all. I find it very satisfying.
So here is the heat press from Xtool and I will show you all the features as I create my projects as we go along. So for the first one, I am going to stick my heat transfer vinyl on this mini bag, which I actually got from an Air France flight to Mexico last year. And since I'm not one to throw anything away, I did want to turn this into like a, a little weekend travel makeup bag. So first things first, turn the machine on and just wait for it to heat up. And I'm going to put the bag on top of the cushion pad and because this has a zip, I'm just going to place it on the edge. Then I am going to place the HTV on the top and then line it up. And then once it's lined up, I will just need to swivel the top of the heat press and then pull the lever down. And then for this type of HTV, I have used the temperature of 160 degrees Celsius and this is the correct temperature for this type of HTV. So I've selected the preset and there are four in total. And then all I need to do is press the start button and that will begin the timer. When the time's up, a beep will sound and then I can pull the lever back up and swivel the heat press to one side. And then just be careful, the pouch will be very hot. So I'm just going to leave it on the side to cool down before I pick off the plastic backing. And whilst that is cooling down, I'm going to get on with my next projects. And this one will be on a sweatshirt. And I'm going to place the cushion inside of the sweatshirt and just position it towards the top of the collar. And then I'm going to just pre-iron it out just a little bit before adding my transfer. So just 15 seconds will do just to flatten it out. And then I can add this iron-on transfer that I bought from a hobby shop and I don't want the letterings. So I'm just going to cut those off and I'll use that later on. Then just place the transfer down, position it. And once again, following the instructions, I am using the same settings as before. So 160 degrees Celsius. And whilst that's heating up, I can now peel off the plastic backing from the pouch. And if you wait for it to cool down completely, it will be really easy to peel off. I love this gold glitter vinyl, really, really gorgeous. I've got to use this more often, it's such fun. And now time to add the holographic lips. But before I do that, let's get the sweatshirt out of the press. It's done, it's had its 30 seconds. And um, let's just see if it's enough. So it's still hot, so I'm just going to leave it on the side to cool down before I peel off the backing. But in the meantime, back to the pouch, same procedure as before, just line up the vinyl. And for this one, I'm going to use the mini press uh, just so I can demonstrate it for you. And I'm just using the heat press as a base and I'm pressing it down much like you would do with an iron. And then I'm going to let this cool down as well. And now I'm ready to peel off the backing for the transfer. And this came off really, really smoothly. And if you want to be sure it's completely sealed, just heat press from the back by turning the sweatshirt inside out. 30 seconds should do. And now back to the bag and off it peels. Really easy, really, really easy. And I love this one too, love the lips. And for the third item, I am using transfer paper for inkjet printers. And uh, this paper is good for both light and dark colored materials. So with this paper, you can use any vector or JPEG image or photo. You print it onto the paper, then you just cut around the shape, leaving just a small border. And so this is the design I came up with. It's a floral illustration and I am going to place this on a tote bag. Now, ideally, I would love to cover the existing logo on the bag, but the transfer paper is a little transparent, so you'll see that it gave a really nice effect, but you'll still see the logo peeking through. But nonetheless, it really came out nice, and again, same method as before, this time I used um, just a flower motif just to cover the logo. 
Then I added the flower transfer paper on top of that and just be careful to use um, a silicone sheet, all the silicone sheet that comes with the transfer paper to place it down on top of the image so that the previous transfer doesn't stick to the heat press plate. And this paper doesn't even need time to cool down. You can see it peels off straight away. It is still hot, so do be careful. And here's this sticker from before. And just to be sure it's all stuck down, I'm going to place the protective paper. Or you could use parchment paper or baking paper on top. And then I'm gonna press it down for another 30 seconds. And here it is, it's a vintage style tote bag. Cute, what do you think? And for the last heat transfer, I am going all out and I am blinging it up with this top that I've had and it's had its motif faded away so I thought I would recycle it. And once again, it goes inside the pad towards the top where I want to add my transfer to. And then I am going to add these iron on strass beads. They are so blingy, so gorgeous, and you only live once, so why not? I just need to peel away the backing and cut off the spare strass they give you in case they fall off. Hopefully it won't, but just in case, I'm going to keep these safe somewhere in case I need them. Then again, so simple to do, you place the strass iron on, on top of the material, and then just make sure you read the instructions first. This strass doesn't need such a high temperature, it only needs 140 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to turn the little temperature dial down on the panel and wait for the temperature to drop before I press it. Then once it's done, I realized I didn't lift the heat press arm high enough. So I'm just going to use the mini press to flatten it out. It's not hot, it's actually turned off, but it does a great job. So no harm done and another good use for the mini press. And for the stress, the instructions did say to press the back. So I'm just going to turn it inside out and press the back for another 30 seconds. And this is probably my favorite one, and I can't even remember where I got these strass from, where I bought them from. Um, I actually got them quite a while ago, but I never really got around to using them until today. So I'm glad I have this machine. It does make the job so easy. And in fact, if you were into t-shirt designing, this would be a great side hassle. You could easily use this machine to batch out custom designed t-shirts or sweatshirts, and you could make some good money. It could be a really good side hustle. And I would do that, but I haven't got much time left in my week with all that I've got going on. But as I consider it a reasonably affordable heat press. So the idea is great for anyone in the market for one. And if you are, I'll leave the link to this one under the video description. So there you are, my fun designs. I hope you've enjoyed this week's gadget. I certainly have. And if you have, please press on the thumbs up and like this video. And why not leave me a comment on other ideas I could do with this heat press. It's always lovely to chat with you in the comments. So please subscribe if you haven't yet and check out my channel for all things creative and hopefully inspiring. Have a great week, everyone. See you in the next one. Bye.